A new group of UK vet students have left their lecture theatres to face their fears in the wild. Hardly any of them have been tried in this manner before. Some of the animals may die while they're looking after them. 40.34, it's still going up. I don't expect animals to die while we're working with them on course, but that lesson is, is learnt far better when it actually happens. Guys, he's fading. This animal has been too hot for too long. Let's go. In the Eastern Cape of South Africa, Dr. William Foles is the head vet for a game reserve called Amakala. Will is a dedicated conservationist. He works with some of the most dangerous animals on Earth in some of the most challenging environments to protect Africa's spectacular wildlife. Confirm she's still alive. I love not knowing what, what today's going to bring. I love the fact that even though I might get a call that sounds like it's fairly straightforward, at any stage in that call out or that procedure, things could happen that are going to challenge me. Every summer, Will opens up the game reserve to vet students from various UK universities. These students seek him out to gain vital work experience with animals. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Steve. Ah. I'm Steve Leonard, here to mentor the students as the course pushes them to their limits. <laughs> it's trying to expose them to as many different aspects of conservation as possible but in a way that puts them in that situation and challenges them at a personal level. And, and that's where I think people can grow. One group of students have already risen to the challenges of the course. And another has just arrived. Something changed in my third year, which has had a profound impact on, on my whole career because I discovered that I had a passion for wildlife that I, in a way that I had never anticipated before. And from then on, I knew that no matter where my veterinary path took me, I was always going to tend towards wildlife. I always wanted to end up being a wildlife vet. You are part of a profession that is undoubtedly, in my mind, the best in the world. Being a wildlife vet is always something kind of considered or had at the back of my mind. So for me, coming out here is almost a trial run to see whether the reality matches up to my ideas. Um, what I find very special about having you guys here for a few weeks is so that you can, well, so that I can see what you see in it. It gives me an incredible amount of personal satisfaction to, to see how you respond to what's out there. I was born in Namibia, so I'm, I'm from Southern Africa and um, I always have sort of a yearning to come back. I'm trying to decide if this is the sort of life that I could lead, so I'm just trying to see how much of a passion I would have for the, the work itself. In the vehicles please, let's go. These new students are Will's most experienced so far. Many are in their clinical and final years. So, for this group, we're taking things up a gear. Today's mission is going to bring them face to face with Africa's biggest animal, elephants. My friend and I, we were in Botswana a few years ago and we got stormed by an African bull elephant. I think it honestly was the time I thought I was closest to dying. Will has to dart two female elephants with a contraceptive drug. Since the 1995 ivory ban, numbers of South African elephants have grown from 8,000 to over 20,000. Yeah, we can see two animals left in the thicket. Measures now have to be taken to limit herd growth, which prevents damage to ecosystems from overpopulation. Turn flashes off, flashes off. This is where you've got to worry that mum might think that we're threatening. There you go. You've got to be a bit careful. <coughs> She's not happy. OK, keep your voices down. We have space behind us to come back. You've got to make sure that we can back up in a hurry. You just sort of realise how small and helpless you are and actually how 
just massive these creatures are. Ooh, she's still not happy. Because I've seen how quickly they can change, so, so from going from very docile to really charging at you, um, I'm more scared of what they can do. Hang on, hang on, hang on, here we go. Here we go. Shh. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, I know. It's too dangerous to dart elephants this close. Will decides to make a strategic retreat. It's the babies that get you in trouble. Yeah. They start messing around, yeah. you know, and start coming too close, and then mum goes, you know, overprotective. I've seen a vehicle that was hit 17 times, and it looked like it had been put through a car crush, and there was somebody inside it when it happened. So it is exciting, yeah. but it is also <laughs> a genuine, a genuine worry. And we all like our lives, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do we love <laughs> life? <laughs> Do we want to live? <laughs> Everyone who loves life, run about this. I've got in the wrong car. He's not. <laughs> We must find a safer position to dart from. Okay. So give me, give me a bit of angle. I'm not talking. They are angry. So I get if she can stop for us. Okay, just I'm gonna lift down it shop, but I'm gonna try. Oh my God! I didn't know he was dying. Will successfully darts the first female. The contraceptive is injected on contact. Look at that female and make sure that if it was you, that you could identify her again, basically, because there's two to do. You don't do the same one twice. Are we still going to try to dart the elephant? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so scared. Elephants are identified by unique marks on their ears and tusks, which are as individual as a fingerprint. Okay, getting close, getting close here. They're gonna come back together again, and that's hopefully when he's gonna be the shot. That's her, okay. Okay. Can I let it go past? Yes, yep. Oh, there, yep, okay. <laughs> With the second female safely darted, Ernie can breathe a sigh of relief. Will's going to leave you the second two doses if you'd like to hand inject them <laughs> in four weeks' time. It's been sort of a, a shock, but if I see an elephant again, I'd like to walk away feeling at peace with elephants as opposed to feeling terror. <laughs> Coming up... 40.34, it's still going up. If we have any more water... A heart -a beast life hangs in the balance. If you're not getting the temperature down, what can you do? Being a vet is about life and death decisions, and sometimes there isn't an easy solution. A new day begins at Amakala. Will and the students are already tackling their first mission to capture and remove hartebeest which have been sold to another reserve. When we're taking an animal from one reserve and shifting off to another, you kind of think, is that right for that animal to be suddenly shifted to a completely different place? But you have to make sure that populations are balanced so that the kind of wildlife and ecosystem and everything that works together can continue. With the animal darted, the students must maintain visual contact. Male hartebees can be aggressive and kill other males in the herd if they show signs of weakness. There they go. Oh my goodness. Do we need to move? The darted animal is at risk from the herd. Will and the students must get to it quickly. I'll see what he's like with me when I get out here. Oh, 
it. The sedative hasn't fully taken effect. The group must wait until the animal goes down. Yeah, he's going to get on you. Yeah. Oh, he's just gone down. Yeah. Yeah, Will is taking control of this capture to illustrate how the procedure should go. Okay, this guy's at seven milligrams. 39.1. Just 0.2 now. Okay, we need to watch that temperature. So if it's going when under sedation, the animal is in danger of overheating in the hot sun. They must keep the temperature down with water. Uh, 39.4. Okay, let's get water on, guys. You feel him starting to wake up a bit? Yeah, lots more. Okay, you ready? One, two, three, go. Cross handles. Oh, hold on. <laughs> right, just tuck this Ernie has to give the injection that wakes the animal up. To his left, you're right. It's 12 milligrams per mil. It's diprenorphine. How does that put you? Um, it should be about 8, 18. Okay, about 1.75. We've got 1.5. That's fine. Eh? Okay, right. Just a, a tip when you are giving reversals. If you do blow the vein, there's a good chance that some of it might have gone IV before it blew. In which case, if you take too long to have your second stab, the uh, animal might wake up. So he's getting up soon, so let's get out. Everybody out, 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 out. Ernie, very well done. Okay. <laughs> nice work under pressure. Well <laughs> good, good lord. 18 one. <laughs> Does anyone have any spare tranquilizer? <laughs> <laughs> Under Will's supervision, the capture has gone well. It's now time for the students to take charge. Will darts two heart a beast. I'm not doing this one, it's yours. The students need to be split into teams to deal with the animals. Who's doing anaesthetic? Will is working with the first group led by Michael, a third year Edinburgh student. I haven't heard one set of parameters yet. It's 80 blood pressure. What was the respiration? The respiration was uh, 12. Hold on tight. Sorry. Oh. Oh. I'm going to be with Hannah's group. These students are very experienced, so it'll be interesting to see how they cope. Yeah. Will and Steve are very insistent that we do things for ourselves. And I'm really glad about that because it means you actually learn from your mistake and then can try and rectify it. So it's definitely the best way to do it, I think. Okay. Resp's, tw resps 20. 30, 39.7 temperature. So it's 39.8. Water, water. There's water, some water yeah. in my Yeah, there is in my oh, well. Our immediate reaction was to try and find some water to put on the heart beast to try and bring down a temperature and then to use some air movement to try and cool the heart beast as well when it was wet. So we're on 40.2. Does anyone have any spare clothes? We can start flapping. The heart beast temperature is unusually high and it's rising. 40.34, it's still going up. Despite following the correct procedures, the students can't get the temperature down. Something is wrong with this animal. Hannah and her team need to find out what. So we're on 40.5. Um, that's what we want to get it down. It needs to be 39 Sorry. or below. So we need to um, cool it down some more. If we have any more water, we're out of water. I'll get some water. Guys, any more? It's no water in the back of the pickup, is there? Yeah, I'll, I'll... I think we were also in the moment that we were just try, sort of desperately trying to do the next thing that would make the situation better. So I think there was definitely panic within the group, but everyone seemed to just deal with it sort of very calmly. We've got 40.8. 42 degrees is the maximum temperature the heart beast can withstand. If we didn't cool this red heart beast down and cool it down quickly, then it would be left with irreparable organ damage. We could never let it back out in the wild. The only choice would probably be euthanasia. We're on 41.5. We need the truck and we need to get him on it. Mm. I don't expect animals to die while we're working with them on course, but that lesson is, is learnt far better when it actually happens. Being a vet is about making decisions. It's about life and death decisions. And that's what they're here to learn. And sometimes there isn't, there isn't an easy solution. Um, I think we need to reverse him quick, guys. So can we get him on the stretcher? Yeah. Getting pretty bloated, guys. We can't put him in yet because we've still got an animal in the back. Whilst the trailer is prepared for loading, Hannah has to partially wake the animal up. This is a last resort to bring the temperature down. A semi-conscious animal can be dangerous, but it should be able to manage its temperature naturally. 
Confirm what you're giving it? 50 milligrams, be tall to know. 50 milligrams? I was giving 5 milligrams, I think. Okay, 5. What volume? So that would be 0.1 mil. Okay. It's fine. Is it in? No, I've... Okay. I'll see in this light. Try the other ear if you want. There's a vein more on this side. We inject into veins quite regularly as vet students, but most of the time in England it's into a dog or a cat that's being held down nicely by a nurse, not into an antelope that's at the point of dying. OK, guys, can you not rock it for a sec? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm it's struggling really with this one. Ah, you got it. Just go for yeah. it. Can you release? Yep, you got it. Yeah. That's gone. Yes, you can. I was so relieved when I finally got the injection in, but I knew we weren't out of the woods yet, so there was no time to celebrate. The temperature is 41.8. Come use the water there. The temperature still appears to be spiralling out of control. The students are doing all the right things, but no one has taken the lead to identify the underlying problem. It's still going it just... Your back chamber is clear, you can open it now. Michael's group load their hartebeest, but they can't wake it up until Hannah's group also load their animal. Come body position, guys. Get that body position right. Guys, you've got added complications. You can't reverse it because you need to wait for the other group. Move your animal across so you can put two animals there, wake them in at the same time. Are you happy that this anaesthetic is OK? Can he, can he survive another five minutes safely? His bloat's getting quite OK, I, I would do something about the bloat, but fix his body position first. Get him into the, onto the side there. So the temperature keeps fluctuating between 41.6 and 41.8? Guys, still really low rest rate, about eight and really shallow. OK, if you're not getting the temperature down with water, what can you do? Wake him up. Let's get him in here and wake him up fast. We're at 41.9. When Will said that we actually had to wake the animal up because we just couldn't get its temperature down, that's when it first sort of dawned on me that it, we really were in an emergency situation and it, we really had to act very quickly. Okay, we need to move it, guys. This animal has been too hot for too long. Let's go. Okay, one, two, three, go. Will knows the heart beast is currently within safe margins, but to prevent the temperature reaching critical, the animal must be woken up immediately. Someone ready to reverse here? You in, Amy? Two, Just confirm your group is topped up with a zipper. Yeah, OK, stretch out. Guys, he's fading. We need to get him in his stand. Come, we need to move it up now, guys. Get that stretch out fast. OK, guys, can we have someone ready to pull this stretcher out forward? Yeah. OK, guys, they're pulling the stretcher out in front. OK, ready to lift, ready to lift, everyone. One. Ready? Left. Who's doing reversals? I want you to find a vein, please. Do not inject yet. Tell us when you're in. Got it. Line falls off, your plugs out. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, I was trying to get out. Is he up? He was really out, but still. Now conscious, the heart beast can regulate its body temperature. Is showing no side effects from the overheating. You did a great job with taking, <laughs> keeping going with the temperature and shouting out, it's like, guys, 41.8, we need to get this down, we need to get this out, you're in ER. <laughs> Everyone was just really ecstatic that we'd come through and all the animals were alive. The students are pleased with their performance, but they came close to experiencing every vet's worst fear their animal dying. <laughs> okay, listen up. What do you think? Are you happy with the animals? Our last heart of was hot. <laughs> Like 41.8. Okay. Right, now that animal didn't run a long way. We drafted him probably 250 meters away. He strolled across the valley. Um, it's not particularly warm today. Well, this time of the day anyway. So, so what's pushed his temperature up? Drugs. Okay, that's a drug induced hypothermia. It's because the drugs mess with the thermoregulation center. So you need to bear that in mind. Sometimes you can do everything. You can dunk them in ice water and they will, won't cool down. How long can we keep an animal that for? For the 41.8. Okay, what, where, where do cells start dying? What temperature? The cells start dying over 42. So I think you're wise because you've had an extended temperature, you give this guy some corticosteroids. Third year Edinburgh student Sophie must give the heart beast a steroid injection as a safety precaution. This has been charged, okay, and pulled and charged, so it's gonna fire a piston up there okay. and push that, okay. Key thing when using this is when you put it in, hold it in, that's it, that's it, go and press hard, press hard, press hard, lovely. Okay. Yeah. 
Did that, that make that. sense? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. The fully recovered harter beasts begin the journey to their new reserve. At the end, I hadn't realised quite how much adrenaline was kind of pumping at that point, but I just suddenly felt exhausted, you know, the excitement's gone and your, your energy levels just drop. And I think at first I found it hard to always talk to anyone about it because I felt like it was a situation I had to process myself first. Maybe I could have been a bit more proactive in this situation. But then looking at the others in my group, you realise they were feeling exactly the same and actually you have come out the other side and the animal is still alive and it, it's just about okay. <laughs> Anna has impressed me. She's very competent. She's calm under pressure. She's got good knowledge. She could be potentially a very good leader in a situation. She could be a, somebody that takes charge and, and runs the show. And yet, she's too quiet. She just doesn't like taking that step forward and taking charge. She's saying the right thing, but nobody's listening. Over the next few weeks, I hope Hannah will step up and become the leader I believe she has the potential to be. <laughs> Next time... Let's get ropes on there, guys. Let's get ropes. The students struggle to deal with some of Africa's most unique animals. Oh, please get up. Please get up. Are we still breathing? And all the time, I just kept thinking if it dies, I thought I was going to be sick. Yeah, we're losing precious seconds there. What's going on? What's the plan? On the head, on the head, go. I'm shaking still.